The story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. And whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trusts. I will exercise my art solely for the cure of my patients. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York. The nerve center of medical progress where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. His temperature is 103.6, Dr. Gillespie. All right, Parker. Uh, help Jimmy get that oxygen tent over him. Uh, take hold of the other side there, Parker. All right, Dr. Kildare. How old is the child, Mrs. Delbert? Six, Doctor. It's Miss Delbert. Oh, you're not his mother. No, his governess. Hmm. I work for Mrs. Norton. She and David's father are... Well, separated. Uh, They're waiting for the court to decide custody. Well, the court may not get a chance to. Boy's in pretty bad shape. Oh, it happened so suddenly. After I'd put him to bed tonight. Until then, I thought it was only a cold. Well, it isn't a cold now. It's pneumonia. All right, Parker, let's move him up under the tent. Here, I'll move this pillow. (laughs) Now. Lovely. Mommy. Oh, it's all right, David. Mommy will be here pretty soon. Mommy. Daddy. Close the tent on your side now. I'll turn on the oxygen. I was simply at my wit's end, Dr. Gillespie. I couldn't get in touch with Mrs. Norton, and I didn't know what to do. Adjust the valve if you need to, Parker. All right, Dr. Gildare. Where is the boy's mother, Miss Delbert? Well, she's uh, she's at a party uptown. We had no idea when she left that it was anything serious. Can't you call her? No, it's it's some people who are leaving town tomorrow, and their phone is disconnected. Mm. Do you know where Mr. Norton lives? Yes, he has an apartment uptown, but... Well, I mean, Mrs. Norton wouldn't have liked it if I... Well, I thought I'd better call the hospital. I see. Jimmy, there's not much we can do for the next two or three hours until this hits a crisis... Suppose we get out of the room now and give the boy a chance to quiet down. Good idea. Better stay with him, Parker. Call us if there's any change. Yes, Doctor. This way, Miss Delbert. Thank you. Is it... Is it really serious, Doctor? Well, he's had the full course of shots, antibiotics, and he's under oxygen. That's about all we can do at the moment. Depends entirely on how he meets the crisis. Yes, his condition is very serious. About his parents, Miss Delbert, is this separation recent or... Well, what's behind it? It's recent. It happened about a couple of months ago. I don't think either of them actually know what caused it. But, well, now their pride's involved. And, well, I, I shouldn't even be talking about it. Mm. And you mean by implication that I shouldn't be asking? Well... You got something I... in mind, Jimmy? Yes. Whatever personal differences the Nortons may have, they should be able to put them aside for tonight at least and think of just one thing. Hmm. That child in there fighting for his life. Well, I'm sure if they knew... You can call it moral support, feeling of security, or whatever. But he needs a father and mother standing by. And I'm going to see that he has them. Good. I agree with you. Go to it, Jimmy. And you're going to help me. If there's one thing that... Huh? Be 
Good evening. Evening. Uh, I'd like to speak to Mrs. William Norton, please. Mrs. Norton? Is she expecting you? No, she's not. I see. And who may I say is calling? You may say it's the Maharaja of Zambongo if you want to. I've never met her and the name wouldn't mean a thing. Just ask her to step out here. Well, one moment, if you please. Ah, confounded, supercilious idiot. He's a dead ringer for Peru. <laughs> Quite a party. Good evening. Uh, you wanted to see me? I did, if you're Mrs. Norton. Why, yes, I am, but I... I don't believe this. Don't no, you haven't. Uh, Leonard Gillespie, staff doctor, Blair Hospital. <laughs> well, doctor, by that the moment, I'm feeling fine. Yeah, uh, right at the moment, you're feeling terrible. And you're trying to fool yourself and everybody else into thinking you feel gay and carefree. Well, all of which is beside the point. Yes, it certainly is. Now, if you'll excuse me... Get your coat, Mrs. Norton, and let's go. I beg your pardon. Your son's at the hospital with a case of pneumonia. David? At the hospital? That's right. That cold of his suddenly became worse a couple of hours ago, and the girl who works for you called us. Yes, well, uh, wait until I get my coat, Dr. Gillespie. Your coat, madame. Oh, thank you, Betty. Uh, will you explain to the Vandekers? That, that your I... son is seriously ill, madame? Yes, I'll take care of it. Thank you. All right, doctor. I'm ready. Good evening, madame. Doctor? Good night, snooper. I beg you. Oh. I wonder why on earth Miss Delbert didn't phone me with... Oh, she couldn't, of course. I hope she didn't call my... David's father, I mean. She didn't. Thank heavens for that. He may be at the hospital when we get there, though. A young associate of mine went after him. Oh? I'm sorry you did that. Yeah, here's the elevator. Mrs. Norton, what are you more concerned about? Your pride in the possible embarrassment of the situation or the welfare of your child? Why, my child, of course. Yeah. Look, you've gone to considerable trouble to get both of us to the hospital. Is David's condition really dangerous? It is. Come on. Just wait, I'll be right back. He's supposed to be here in the bowling alley. Oh, pardon me. Yeah? I'm looking for a man named Bill Norton. Bill? Oh, right over there. Oh, thanks. Uh, Mr. Norton. Hmm? My name's Kildare. I'm a staff doctor at Blair Hospital. Oh, what can I do for you, doctor? You can come with me to the hospital. Got a cab waiting outside. <laughs> doc, I'll tell you. Come I on, never... Bill, you're up. Oh, yeah. Hold it up for a second, will you, doctor? You better skip it, Mr. Norton. With a fourth strike coming up? Your son is a very sick boy. What? What's wrong with him? Pneumonia. Change your mind? Yes, yes. Wait a minute. Get the shoes changed, I'll be right Change them on the way over. It'll save time. Is that bad, huh? Oh, uh, look, fellas, I'm sorry. You'll have to get somebody else. My kid's in the hospital. All right, Doc, let's go. You know, I'm a little surprised at my wife, that Mrs. Norton would tell you where to find me. She didn't. I checked with the manager at your apartment house. Mrs. Norton doesn't know about this yet. She was somewhere at a party when the governess called us. Oh, great. Wait till the court hears about this. I don't think there's any reason to blame her. The child took sick after she'd gone. Oh, sure, sure. That's the Delbert girl story. My cab's over there. Okay. And let's get one thing straight. Yeah? I came after you because I thought David needed a father standing by. He doesn't need an irate husband. <laughs> Temperature is 104.2 now. Still rising. He'll go higher. He still has got the tough fight ahead of him. Yeah, Jimmy, yeah, it'll be another couple of hours or more yet. We've done everything we can for him, except... Parker, has he been conscious at all? Oh, yes, Dr. Kildare. Most of the time, in fact. Oh, then let's have them come in, Dr. Gillespie. Maybe I'm crazy, but I think it would help if he knew he wasn't fighting alone. Jimmy... You're borrowing medical theories from my generation. <laughs> I guess I have been around you too long. 
You implying I've exercised undue influence? Not at all. Miss Potter, where on earth did... There you are. Outside, Carew. What? Come on, come on now. This patient has enough problems without you fluttering around the room. Come in, Jimmy. Right with you. Please, Dr. Gillespie. Well, after all, it was hardly necessary to manhandle me. Your gardenia is slipping, Carew. It is? Oh, dear, it is. Thank you. Do you have something in mind, Dr. Crew? Well, certainly I have something in mind. I... Now, what that... Oh, yes. <clears throat> Someone, and I won't mention names, said that both of you had left the hospital. Not really. Oh, yes. And I'm very glad I was misinformed. You weren't. What? We did. Oh. Good night, Carew. Good night, gentlemen. I, I, I wanted to ask you... I, I, I wanted to... Oh, Oh, come now. You're just bitter. Yeah. You know, I'm almost scared to open the door to the lounge. They've been there together for ten minutes. The place may be a shambles. Well. Oh, how is he, Doctor? About the same, Mrs. Norton. It's still too soon to tell. What about seeing him? Can I... I mean, can we go in? Yes, that's why we brought you here. He's been calling for both of you for the last couple of hours. Poor baby. We have every reason to believe he'll pull through, though. But pneumonia in a child his age is always dangerous, and he has to do the fighting. All we can do is help. Well, now, look, if it's a matter of expense... It I don't... isn't a matter of expense, Mr. Norton. It's a matter of human intangibles, courage, and faith. That's where you come in. You're his parents, his security, in a way. I think it'll help his chances to know you're standing by him. And so far, Dr. Gillespie hasn't disagreed with me. Nor would old Dr. Breen if he was still alive. He's the man who taught me the value of moral support back in 1915. I know what you mean. All of us need other people when we're ill. Mm. So it's natural for a child to turn to his mother at a time like this. Yes, must be quite a shock when he finds she's gone off to a party. I told you I didn't know he was ill. You knew he had a cold. What kind of a mother are you, anyway? Not as good a one as you are a father. Now, wait a minute. I think the court may be very interested in hearing about this. Oh, really? Well, there may be a few things I can tell the court, you know. Fine. You just go to it. All right, I well, will. Lord, that's enough, you know, that's enough to... both of you now. We hope we were dealing with rational adult parents who could see David's welfare as being more important at the moment than their own personal quarrel. Oh, I know sure. he is now, the wait. Oh, We've already told you that he's seriously ill and that he needs you, both of you. But that's as far as we can go. From there on, it's up to you. So make up your minds. <laughs> Return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Continue with the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Now you understand he may not be conscious, or at least not enough to recognize you, and in that case, we'll just have to wait. I think we understand, Dr. Kildare. All right, let's go in. Oh, come in, Jimmy. The boy seems to be rousing a bit now. Good. Parker, will you open the front of that oxygen tent for a few minutes? All right, Dr. Kildare. Come on up here now. Close, please. Try talking to him. A patient in delirium always recognizes a familiar voice sooner than a face. David. David. It's Mommy. And Daddy's here, too. Hello, David. Darling... You're going to be all right now. Everything's going to be all right. Mommy. He's got his eyes open. I think he knows you. Daddy. He doesn't. Hello, son. David, dear. 
They're both right here. Look at them now. We're going to help you. And you'll be all well again. Can you hear me? Yes, Mommy. Don't you worry, son. You're going to be all right. All right, Daddy. That boy. Mommy. He's gone off to sleep again. Look, he's smiling. Poor baby. You better close the tent, Parker. He needs all the oxygen he can get. Well, sleep or not, I think he's aware that you're here and standing by. And that's all you can do. Mm, there's an empty room right next door if you'd like to wait. We'll let you know the minute we're sure of anything. Uh. He isn't going to die, Dr. Kildare. He's a strong, healthy child, Mrs. Norton, and he's making a good fight. He's getting all the help you can give him, or medical science can give him. I see. Come on, Betty. We'll wait next door, Doctor. All right. Well, I guess there's nothing to do but wait. Not long at that, judging by his temperature. Crisis coming up? No, I think he's in it now. We'll know before long, one way or another. He could stand one more shot, don't you think? Sure. Parker, will you get another A44 ampule and a high bone? Of course, Dr. Kildare, right away. Two o'clock in the morning. It's too bad about the boy there. Even if he pulls through, he's not going to have an easy life. Parents separating, you mean? Yeah. Fighting over custody, yeah. Huh? Well, you know, it's too bad for them, too. Especially if they lose him. Yeah, he's apparently the only thing in common they got left. Oh, I think they may have a lot of things in common if yeah. they only knew it. But, like Miss Delbert said, it's become purely a matter of pride on both sides. Well, if the threat of losing their son can't break down the pride, nothing can. But that's it. It's happened so fast and been so much of a shock. They're worried about him, of course, but neither of them really believes he may die. Wish I knew he wouldn't. Oh, if there were only some way of oh, scaring them. Now, wait a minute, Jimmy. Well, maybe this business of custody, if they thought neither of them would get custody. No, 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 hold it. Even if you do have a scheme that might work, it, it's a cruel thing to spring at a time like this. Uh, I don't agree. To an Australian bushman who didn't realize its purpose, a surgical operation would probably seem cruel. Mm -hmm. The time like this is the only time it would work. Look, will you take care of things here for a few minutes? I'm going to wake up Carew. Carew? What do you want with that idiot? <laughs> In certain situations, he can be highly impressive. And this is one of those situations. <laughs> And it, and mind you, I'm agreeing to nothing. You want me to tell these people that I should advise the court to declare their child a public war. That's right. You say it's your opinion that neither of them is a fit parent to have sole custody. That you'll use all your influence. Wear your gardenia and give them that down-the-nose Boston look. In other words, you know, give them the business. Oh, dear, I do wish sometimes that you could use language of a more professional character, Dr. Kildare. Oh, that's amazing, Dr. Carew. That's exactly what Dr. Gillespie said a few minutes ago. Oh, really? Yes, that's why I came up here. Dr. Gillespie said, uh, Jimmy, Dr. Carew is the only man who could do this. You and I talk like a couple of bums. Dr. Gillespie said that? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Well, I have always tried to keep up a... Uh, maintain certain standards. Well, of course, this job does require a little more than that. And it's just possible that even you couldn't carry it off. Indeed. Yes, sir. Um, well, you see, it's a matter of... Um, I guess the word is finesse. Well, I have certainly never regarded finesse as being a talent with which I am totally unfamiliar. Oh, well, then you'll have a try at it. Dr. Gilder, a crew never merely tries. I should do it. Good. Uh, here, put on your gardenia. I don't know, Jimmy. It's pulsing shallow and fast. The shot had its effect, of course, all right, but I don't know. Well, in a child his age, he can break fast, Dr. Gillespie, either way. Do you think he ought to be turned again? Yes, he should, Parker. You need some help? Oh, no, no. He's as light as a feather. I wonder if a lung dab would do any good. Oh, it would not. You know it. I guess you're right. Dr. Gillespie! Oh, quiet. Come on, now, let's step outside. Oh, very well. Now, I've been 
been wondering how you came out. Came out indeed. Oh, you have no idea what those people said to me. Both of them. The language they used. Oh. Unprofessional, I suppose. Why, that woman accused me of trying to break up their home. No. And that concert of hers, her uh, <laughs> husband, called me a meddling old busybody. A united front, eh? Dr. Carew, that's when you needed finesse. Finesse? <clears throat> yes, indeed. I might say that I did rise to the occasion. Oh? No, I simply gave him a long, steady look, turned on my heel, Uh and walked out. Marvelous. I knew we could depend on you, Dr. Carew, and I think you carried it off splendidly. You do? (laughs) Thank you. I did feel a certain uh, command of the situation. Come here, Jimmy. Hmm? Take a look at this thermometer. Temperature starting to drop. That's right. He's past the crisis. I think we've won. Like to open a bottle of champagne or shoot off a firecracker? Oh, I think I'll just settle for a long sigh of relief. I guess maybe we should have come down here and told him right away. Oh, I think it was better to wait the half hour and be sure. At least we... Hey, look. Well, I'll be a... Parker, oh. what are you doing peeking through that keyhole? You want them to hear you, Dr. Glass? And I'm surprised at you, Dr. Carew, tolerating something like this. Uh, well, uh, mm-hmm. I was really... I mean, well, after all, th- th- those two people had threatened me. And... Move over, Parker. All oh, right, you don't have to push. And when their dispositions were obviously somewhat violent... Well, well by the great horn spoon they... locked in each other's arms. <laughs> Well, that sort of conduct is positively indecent for a married couple. Cynic. (laughs) Well, it looks as though two crises have passed. Let's give them another ten minutes before we break in on them. Well, I certainly have no desire to break in on them in ten minutes or in ten years after those names they called me. Gentlemen, Miss Parker, I am going to retire. From the hospital, Dr. Carew? To bed, Dr. Gillespie. Oh, well, good night and pleasant dreams. Pinheaded pipsqueak. Uh, no, I don't know. He did a perfect job tonight just by being himself. I think he ought to have a citation. Oh, Jimmy. Not the order of the silver syringe. Oh, no. No, that might be going too far. Why not just let him in with us? The membership of medical meddlers. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess we do meddle in patients' affairs sometimes. <laughs> My dear Dr. G, has there ever been any doubt of it? <laughs> Come on, let's see if there's any coffee in the wardroom. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. Once again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Well, David, I can't find a thing wrong with you. Not a thing. How do you feel? Oh, I feel fine. Just like brand new. I actually think he does look healthier than before, Dr. Kildare. Could be. Stand up straight there, son, and and, and say, ah. Ah. You're cured. That's a sure test. (laughs) You know, as a matter of fact, several things with it are cured. I know. I, I'm, I'm glad they are. So am I. Oh, uh, before I go, I have a little something here for that wonderful man who was responsible for it. Oh. Uh, we never did know his name, but he came into the lounge that night and really told us off. He made us stop uh, and think. Yes, well... Be... Of course, he may think this is silly. It's a box of maple sugar candy my mother sent from Vermont. They still make it in the old traditional way. Boil the syrup, you know, and pour it on the snow. Mm-hmm. Maple sugar. Mm. 
Well, Mrs. Norton, that man that you're speaking of happens to be on vacation at present. Oh, that's me, but Dr. Carew's out here and would like to come in. Carew? Never heard of him. Hmm? I mean, if you tell him I'm in conference and I'll call him later. All right. Uh, you just leave the box, Mrs. Norton, and we'll take care of it for you. Oh, would you? Oh, glad to. Thank you. Well, come on in, David. Daddy's waiting for us. Okay, Mommy. You be sure and tell that man how much he did for us. Oh, to be sure, to be sure. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Norton. Goodbye, Dr. Gillespie. Dr. Kildare. Hmm. Hey, now, let's see. Get this box open. Dr. G, you're a man of low chicanery. Ah, uh, I used to love this stuff when I was a boy. I can believe it. You're acting exactly like a dope addict. And after all these years, I've finally found your price. Five pounds of maple sugar candy. Never mind my price. Here, make yourself sick. <laughs> You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayres and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Les Crutchfield and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Ted Osborne, Isabel Jewell, Stacey Harris, Jay Novello, Jeffrey Silver, and Lynn Ainley. Dick Joy speaking.